finally got one. That's a nice one. <laughs> That's a nice. Oh, <laughs> I knew he was coming off. I barely had him hooked. See if I can get another one down there. <laughs> I've been out fishing too deep. I thought these fish were a lot, a lot deeper. I decided to move up and throw a jig, and all of a sudden I'm in fish like that right there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Watch that graph light up. Watch that graph. Oh, yeah. There's a fish. A little spoon bass. Little Roosevelt spoon bass. <laughs> Come here, buddy. <laughs> Look at that fish. I got to hurry up and get back down there. But they're eating it. They're eating it. I was in the wrong place. Oh, come on. Sorry, folks. You're at my back. But come on. There you go. We'll release him real quick. See if we can get down there to get some more. They're still down there. They're still down there. Let's get down there where they're at. Boy, it helps when you got two people in the boat, let me tell you. If you got two people in the boat, you can sure catch them up pretty fast. I'm using a half ounce spoon, a Hopkins spoon. And uh, we just had a wave of fish just kind of come through. I was throwing my jig because I thought I'd move up and maybe do some jigging, and then they moved up. Oh, it just kind of dropped off into 36 foot of water. So we're on a drop off right here, which might be perfect. They're getting them shad, look at that. I'll tell you what, when you can start finding, look at him, he came up with a shad. He's got a shad. There's fish are down there, eating them shad. Now we're in 38 foot of water. It kind of dropped off from 26 to 38. They're down there though. They're right on the ledge. I want to get back up on that ledge. And you can see right here, look where the boat's sitting on the graph. And you can see that we're in 38 foot of water. I'm going to kind of go right inside that cut. And the cut kind of comes back up in here and find the inside of that cut. And then uh, where, it come, where it actually comes up. Let's see if we can get out there, get up there. I got the boat moving right now. We're in 38 feet of water, 38 feet of water. It's a drop off right here. So here we go. We're seeing some shad. We're seeing some shad. Get back up here where I was. Get bit again. Look at all those shad. Those are shad. That's a shad ball right there. There'll be some fish. We got to get a little shallower. We got to get up there a little shallower where those fish are. We got a little cut right here. This is awesome. Awesome. There's the Hopkins spoon I'm using, which is a really cool spoon. Well, might have to retie it. Yeah, I might have to retie it. But that's the spoon. It's a Hopkins spoon. It's a half ounce. You can get a Strata spoon, a Hopkins spoon, and that's what I'm throwing. I'm going to retie this real quick and we'll get back the spoon and we'll get back on this spot. But I got to retie. That's a good one. That's a good fish. I've either foul hooked it. I think I may have foul hooked that fish. Look at my screen light up. Oh yeah. <laughs> look at the size of that fish though. <laughs> that's, <laughs> look, that's a two and a half pounder. <laughs> look, you normally don't want to try to do that, but with spooning, sometimes you can't help but do that. Look at that fish. Let's get back down there where they're at. We got them fired up down there now. We had the whole school come up. We had the whole school come up. <laughs> there they are down there. Come on. Let's see if we can fire another one up. Well, a lot of times what these fish will do is they'll be in wolf packs down there. And when you're popping your spoon, if you got a good hook, sometimes it just happens that way. Things like that happen especially when you're spooning. And a lot of times, you know, that, that was a good wolf pack of fish right there. You know, you saw the size of that fish. That was a two and a half, three pounder. You find those wolf packs like that, you got two people spooning. You fire the pack up by, by catching one fish. It'll be all kind of, they'll be kind of going through the, 
area, you'll see them down there. And then when one person catches the fish, they all start swarming in. And then another person throws down there and catches the fish and you're, you're doubling up really quick. And you can get a limit quick doing that. And uh, it's a lot of fun. That's one thing fun about spoon fishing is you can go for a while without getting bit and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 put 15 pounds in the boat, you know, that quick. You know, folks, my setup for today is a Taipan 710 medium. I'm using a medium action rod. And uh, I'll tell you, <clears throat> I had Simon make this for me for my little swim baits, things like that. But that 710 rod is perfect. The tip is perfect. Everything for this spoon. Eight pound fluorocarbon line. I'm using a Johnny Moore Signature Series spinning reel. And, uh, you know, it's a perfect setup. Now here's the deal with the spoon, that something that's really important to understand with a spoon is this is the time you want to use a swivel, okay? A lot of times you get these spoons out of the box, they come with a chrome hook or something like that. You want to change your hooks out, okay? This came with a number six hook, I went to a number four, okay? Uh, I use a Gamagatsu hook. Then I put an O-ring right here, sometimes they don't come with the O-ring. And then that's when I put the swivel on. Now I'm using a clip swivel, but the ticket is when you use a clip swivel is you want to take your pliers and kind of pinch down where the swivel doesn't pop open on you. So you want to pinch it down once you close the swivel up, okay? And that's what you want to do right there. And that's your rig. You just kind of let it fall down and you flutter it, you know, let it flutter down and then you pull it back up. You snap with just a little snaps of the rod tip and let it flutter back down. You want a little slack in your line as you let it flutter back down because if you follow the lure straight down, it's gonna, it's gonna come up and instead of falling like this, it's gonna kind of fall straight. So when you pop it, you put just a little slack in your line as you let it fall and it kind of lets it free float a little bit down. You really have to watch what you're doing there. Wow, and we just went over a bunch of fish and wasn't paying attention. Sometimes it's really hard, but once you find them and you find out how, where they're schooling up at and about the depth of water they're schooling up at, they're all over the place this time of year. We're towards the end of summer, going into fall, and you know, they're gonna be anywhere from 50 foot of water all the way up to two foot of water. So they're chasing shad, they're, get, they're gorging up for the, for the fall. Fishing becomes a lot of fun. You can do all kinds of different fishing. You can catch them on crankbaits, and we got a calm, clear day today. And uh, usually if you can find them spoonfish, you can be pretty successful when the water's slick like this. This is another technique that's a lot of fun. You know, what you'll do is you always have a spoon on the deck and whether you're drop shotting the shallows or, or uh, you know, up and around 20 foot of water or whatever you're doing and you look down and they happen to be swimming under you, you can grab that spoon real quick and that's basically what happened is I decided to maybe try the jig a little bit. I didn't have two cast out on it. And this is a big ball of shad here. I'm gonna try to move up a little bit where they might be chasing them. Big ball of shad. If I don't get nothing on the spoon in this area, I'll throw the jig out there in those 20, 25 foot of water and drag it and see if I can't catch a few doing that as well. Hard to leave an area that's got a lot of shad moving back and forth in it. And that's another thing to remember is you'll, you'll catch some fish and it's hard to keep up with them way out here. You know, on your, on your graph, it's hard to, you don't know which way they're going sometimes. And so what you end up doing is, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll come right back through again and you just gotta be ready, you know? You'll have a flurry and then it'll be gone for a while. Then you'll have a flurry and it'll be gone for a while. That's a good fish. Here he comes. <laughs> On that jig. Here he comes. Oh! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. That's a seven pounder. Oh my goodness. That's what I am talking about, son. Oh. That's a big Roosevelt bass, folks. Look at the size, that's even bigger than seven pounds. Oh, come on, baby, I need you. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, son. Jig fish, jig fish. Look at the size of that beast, huh? Oh. <laughs> you don't think he wanted that jig? Look at this. Oh, look at that. You don't think he wanted that jig? He ate it. I could put my fist in this one's mouth. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Hold on, buddy. 
I need my pliers. My hands are all slick. And that, my friends, is exactly what I was talking about. That's exactly what I was talking about. Mm, got it. Oh my goodness, folks. That is a monster bass. All right. I hate to say this. That thing's heavier than seven pounds, baby. We're gonna weigh it. We're gonna take a quick picture for Facebook and we'll be right back. Oh my goodness. Oh, 863. 863 on my scale. Are you kidding me? We gotta let her go. We gotta let her go. We'll let her go on this side. Okay, come on, baby. Oh, you got. Tell me there ain't no big fish in Roosevelt Lake, baby. Look at that, huh? Okay, come on. You're gonna be just fine. Come on. Look at that. Oh, God. I just gotta hold you a little bit more. We'll go back and forth with the fish a little bit. Give it a chance to breathe good. This is what you do. You don't grab by the mouth, you grab by the tail. And then when they swim out of your hand, then you know they're good to go. Just like that. <laughs> Man, and that's why I love this game. You know, today I'm having a lot of fun and I'm sweating. I got sweat running in my eyes. I'll tell you what but it's worth it, worth every minute of it. You know, we got on this little ledge spooning where it's a drop off. And man, I thought the jig is a lot of fun to throw. And let me tell you something, in this area around Windy Hill, <laughs> this, this can be a lot of fun here. And what I did was decide to go to that, go to that jig. And what I'm throwing is a Yamamoto jig, just a spider jig on a half ounce, uh, weight, half ounce uh, jig head. I'm throwing 14 pound test line. I was afraid to go to 12, but uh, I went to 14 and boy, that line's frayed. 14 pound test four carbon, a medium, or excuse me, a heavy, heavy 7.2 rod from Taipan Rods, the Elite Series rod. Tell you what, man, I, I felt him go, Doink! I felt him suck that in and man, he was right there. What a lot of fun that is, huh? Crawdad patterns, when they're eating crawdads, man, you can't beat it. <laughs> I'm gonna retie. And, uh, you know, there's a little one-two punch there. You know, fishing is so crazy. I tell you, they're, it's wide open. We're here, we're catching some spoonfish that are eating on shad, and then here we are throwing out here on, on this flat where it drops off and uh, waiting for the fish to basically move in. <clears throat> You know, like I said, the, the, the spoonfish are here and gone, here and gone. You take advantage of them. They'll swim under your boat, they'll come. They make like, they rotate and they, they just come. And, and when you take that advantage when you have it and you drop that spoon down. But nevertheless, while you're waiting, stay in the area because you know you're on a good area where there's a lead to drop off. You know, it went from 24 foot of water to 35 foot of water. You can't beat those kind of areas like that and it's real rocky so they're eating crawdads in there but what a fish i'm telling you i set the hook on that thing i thought i was snagged at first that was fun hey folks for my tip of the week one thing to always check on your spoon is your hooks okay when you're getting bit a lot you're not you're not actually able to hook up with the fish a lot of times from spooning we get hooked up on rocks or twigs or whatever down there we get the lure loose a lot of times but i want you to take a quick look at this hook and you can see how i've got hooked up i've not only dulled the tip of the hook it's no good i'm going to replace this hook but i've bent it out and if you don't check that periodically a lot of times it'll cost you fish when you get into that big school. So we're gonna change this hook out, but always check your hooks on your spoons, especially if you're getting hung up a little bit, and uh, just be sure they're still sharp and they're still, they're not bent out. And I'll tell you what, that's the difference between whether you're gonna bring a fish to the boat or whether you're not. Hey folks, I wanna show you how I replace hooks really quick on my spoons without using the split ring pliers a lot of times. All I do is I've got my hook here, I've gotta start it coming off the the uh, o-ring so what I'm gonna do is just kind of get it started use my thumbnail a little bit to get it started just like so 
and instead of pulling it completely off and then trying to open it back up, I take the new hook and while I've got that open, I'll put the new hook on just like so. And as I slide the old hook off, the new hook is actually going on, see? So here comes the old hook, boom, there's the old hook. That's the old one, here comes the new one, boom, we're in. Just like that, and that's how fast you can change those hooks out. You ain't gotta use those split ring pliers a lot of times with these bigger O-rings. Sometimes on the smaller ones you do, but, but I can usually do it pretty fast that way. Got him that time, <laughs> I wasn't quite ready. Oh, look at that, oh, that's what we're seeing. That's a yellow bass, folks. That's a yellow bass. I'm catching that on my big Castmaster. Now what I've picked up is a medium action, 7.2, 10 pound test line, fluorocarbon, and my bigger spoon. When you throw the three quarter ounce spoon, I went to the gold Castmaster just to see if because of the water being a little bit dingy, if it would help. And uh, I've been very successful on gold on these Arizona lakes, I really have. And uh, just see what will happen. Anytime I go to like a three quarter ounce, one ounce spoon, that's when I'm gonna be throwing the, the bait cast equipment. Oh man, he hit it right there and I missed him. That's another thing is making sure that you put yourself in position to, to set the hook. You don't wanna be jigging your spoon way up here at 10 and 12 o'clock. You wanna be able to have your rod tip down close tip, close to the water. And when you're giving it those sharp twitches, because if you're up here and then you're pulling the rod tip up like this, then what happens when they bite, you, you have no leverage to set the hook on. So you wanna make sure it's all the way down. It's been a great day on Roosevelt. You know, we came out in the afternoon. The shad are starting to push up a little bit. Remember, it's a wide open bite. You can go out and spoon fish. You can jig fish. Uh, if the wind's blowing, spinnerbait fish. Don't forget the top water. And top water this time of year will usually work pretty much all day long, as long as you keep seeing the shad being busted. And I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun to throw top water all day long. You can definitely do that. But like I said, the fishing's wide open this time of year. You'll have a lot of fun with it. And uh, Roosevelt's just, uh, it's low, but there's still a lot of good fish in this lake and it's a lot of fun. You just gotta find them. You find that spoon bite and you just might open the ticket right there to a lot of fish real quick. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>